Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this two-part video, you should be able to describe how to use a colorimeter to determine the concentration of glucose in a solution. Now, I need to tell you that this can appear quite tricky. You might want to watch this a couple of times to get the idea. In the last video, we saw how to use Benedict's solution to determine the presence of a reducing sugar such as glucose. And we saw the colour produced gives us a very approximate idea of the level of reducing sugar present. For example, a brick red colour shows a greater level of reducing sugar than a green colour. Because the Benedict's test only gives a very approximate idea of the level of reducing sugar, scientists say that it's semi-quantitative. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can use the Benedict's test to determine the concentration of a reducing sugar more accurately. We're going to start by recapping the science behind the Benedict's test. Benedict's reagent is a blue solution, and this blue colour is caused by the presence of the copper ion Cu2+. Reducing sugars such as glucose donate an electron, reducing the Cu2 plus ion to the Cu1 plus ion, and this forms a red precipitate. The red precipitate plus the blue of the Benedict solution leads to the colour changes that we've already seen. Now, if we left our test tube for several hours, then the red precipitate would settle on the bottom, and this would allow us to see the blue Benedict solution above it. Now, the key idea you need to understand is that this Benedict solution will be less blue than it was before the test. That's because some of the copper 2 plus ions have reacted and are no longer in solution. And if we did the test with a greater concentration of glucose, then the Benedict solution would appear even less blue at the end, as even fewer copper 2 plus ions would remain in solution. So bear in mind that with the Benedict's test, the greater the concentration of glucose, the less blue the Benedict solution will be at the end. Now these changes in the blueness of the solution may be too subtle to detect by eye. So we quantify the blueness of the solution by using a machine called a colorimeter. Before we use the colorimeter, we first need to filter off the red precipitate, leaving just the blue Benedict solution. Coming up, we look at how a colorimeter works. OK, let's look at how a colorimeter works. I've got here a lamp which is emitting white light. Remember that white light consists of all of the different colours of the spectrum. If we shine white light through a sample of Benedict solution, then all of the colours in white light will be absorbed, apart from blue. That's because Benedict solution allows blue light to pass through, and that's why Benedict solution has a blue colour. Now this absorption of light can be used to quantify the level of blueness. But rather than using white light, the best colour to use is actually red. That's because Benedict solution absorbs red the most out of all the different colours, as red is on the opposite end of the spectrum to blue. Scientists say that red is the complementary colour to blue. So now we place a red filter in front of our lamp, and this red filter only allows red to pass through. OK, now in this diagram I'm using a Benedict solution which is less blue than before. This could be Benedict solution which has reacted with glucose and has lost some of its blue colour. In this case, because the solution is less blue than before, less of the red light will now be absorbed, meaning that some of the red light will be transmitted. And this red light can be detected by the photoelectric cell. A photoelectric cell is just a type of light detector. Here's a sample of Benedict solution which is very pale blue. So this sample could have been reacted with a relatively large amount of glucose. In this case, even less red light is absorbed by the solution. So as you can see, the less red light is absorbed, the greater the amount of glucose that must have reacted with our Benedict solution. So by using the Benedict's test with a colorimeter, we can more accurately determine the concentration of glucose in a sample. And we look at how to do that in the next video.